many of those causes, as Bob McKenzie tells us in this report from 2001. Bill Graham's life ended in a flash of sparks in a helicopter accident that was both horrifying and spectacular. Master showman that he was, Graham would have appreciated the drama of it. Even in death, he was bigger than life. I always thought of Bill as indestructible if I thought about it at all. I, it just never occurred to me, and really. I, I expected Bill to go get old with the rest of us. In his 20s, Bill Graham wanted to be an actor. His career as a concert impresario had an accidental beginning. When actors in the San Francisco mime troupe were arrested for an allegedly obscene performance, Graham produced a benefit concert for their defense. This was the mid-60s when San Francisco rock music was new and revolutionary. Bill Graham was a little older than the flower children who clustered in the streets and the parks, conspicuously smoking pot, but he shared their politics and their taste in music. Soon he was San Francisco's biggest music promoter. At the old Fillmore Auditorium, he showcased local talent, upstart Bay Area rock bands such as the Jefferson Airplane. He knew talent when he saw it, as when he heard the electrifying guitar riffs of Carlos Santana. Graham, the unsuccessful actor, had found success in the rock concert business. Great business. It's a great love affair. Most joyful, most insane, most pleasant, most disgusting, greatest, vilest business I know of. We buy and sell people and put them on stages. In a business that was mostly about money, Graham got a reputation among musicians as hard driving and shrewd, but also as a man who wasn't all about money. The very talented, very troubled Janis Joplin sang his praises. That's one of the things I dig about Graham, that he doesn't just bring in the successful acts, he brings in acts that he thinks will be good for the kids. Many of his concerts were benefits, with all the money going to causes he believed in, such as the Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic. I get sick and tired of people saying, oh, the world is terrible, the streets are dirty, there are too many drugs, the wars. What else do you do? Do you fetch? What else do you do? If you have, if you have the ability to do something, you just do it. If not, shut up. Well, that's a great. Rock groups, such as the Grateful Dead, owed their fame to Bill Graham, who discovered and promoted them. But they also experienced the darker side of this hot-tempered backstage perfectionist who micromanaged everything from the lighting to the soap in the washrooms. Bob Weir remembers seeing Graham furiously pacing the lobby as a young musician showed up late for a concert. Uncle Bobo sees him. He had a pork pie hat on. And he, uh, it was just like in an old-fashioned movie. He, uh, he grabs a pork pie hat and throws it down on the ground and starts jumping up and down on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought I'd see that for real. Of course, dealing with rock musicians wasn't always a picnic for such a driven man. Bill wanted order, and we wanted chaos. So we had a big difference philosophically on how we were going to control or not control our lives. So there were a million incidents where Bill would just be so frustrated and eyes would bulge out, but there was really nothing he could do, you know, because he loved us so much and we knew it. Graham became rich and his rock empire grew beyond the Fillmore to New York and Los Angeles. But he never let up on his pace. He took on more causes, raising money for famine victims and for cultural classes in Bay Area schools. Clearly, he missed the days when going to a rock concert was a kind of political statement. Everybody was against what was going on in Washington and Vietnam and the civil rights. And there was this, there was a a bond um, much different today. Today, the majority of the people, that, that because of the times we live in, go to be entertained. He was 60 years old on the November night in 1991 when he and two associates left a concert, taking off in driving rain and high winds. The helicopter ran into an electric tower near Vallejo. All three were killed. Abruptly and inexplicably, the turbocharged engine that was Bill Graham had gone quiet. Bill was a maniac, and he was totally consumed with being uh, the uh, greatest promoter of, of music on the planet. And at times, perhaps, he was. 
When we come back on a second look, the boss comes to open.